Every single year, I help thousands of people access credit for their businesses and investments. And in this video today, I wanna give you some of the gems. I wanna tell you some of the personal credit cards that I've personally liked to use and ones that everyone else likes to use that give you the best cash back, that give you the best 0% offers. And I wanna show you guys what are the best credit cards right now in 2024. My name is Andrew Bessie. Every single year, I help thousands of people access hundreds of millions of dollars from the banks at 0% interest. And many of my clients use this money to fund their businesses and investments. But in this video today, I wanna to explain to you a little bit of the benefits to getting credit cards and how you could use the credit cards to make money, make cash back, rewards points, and share with you the actual best personal credit cards of 2024 and the cards that you need to have in your wallet. So let's jump right into the video. Let's not waste any time and I'll see you there. Today, guys, um, we're going to talk about the best personal credit cards of 2024 and the credit cards that if you want to expand your personal credit, right? Because the big important thing here is that if you want to get a lot of business credit, then you got to make sure you're taking care of your personal credit. And why do I say that? And it's because the bank will make their decisions on whether or not to lend you money based on how great of a borrower you are and that you've demonstrated with your personal credit. And the reason why they don't really look at corporate liability only is because it's very, very difficult to judge an applicant based on corporate liability only since really a very small percentage of businesses in America are like basically indestructible. And that's where corporate liability only is ever typically considered is really when the business is like never going to fail. And there's plenty of proof for an extended period of time that um, business liability only has value and all of this other stuff um, can be taken into account. So the way that you're going to get a lot of business credit with, you know, such as like $50,000, $100,000, $200,000 of 0% interest business credit is by having really good personal credit. So this call today, right? This, this workshop that we're gonna do today is all about actually putting the best personal credit cards in your wallet. So that way you have um, the best, like that way you're getting really good cards. You're getting really good cash back. You're getting really good points. You're getting good 0% offers on personal credit cards. Um, if you're new to credit, what are the best starter cards? And so that's how I'm really um, going to essentially like categorize this call today. We're going to talk about what are some of the best starter cards. We're going to talk about what are some of the best cash back cards. We're going to talk about some of the best restaurant cards, some of the best, um, you know, all these different types of cards. And I have that prepared for you guys tonight. So if you guys are excited to talk about that, let me know in the chat with the word funding that you're ready to jump into this. And we should definitely have some time at the end for a Q&A as always, but I wanna share with you guys some of the best personal credit cards of 2024 and how you could get your hands on them. So let's start with um, starter cards. So one of the best starter cards, and I'm pulling up the, the link on my screen here, so that way um, you guys can uh, see this for yourselves. So, Probably one of the best starter cards that everyone here could get their hands on would be the Discover It Cashback card. It's a very low barrier to entry credit card. Um, you could typically get credit limits anywhere between like $1,000 and $15,000. And you could typically get pretty good results with the Discover It Cashback credit card. Um, and there's a lot of really good benefits that you get with this card. Um, I oftentimes even see people get approved with a 680 credit score or no credit score at all. Um, you get 5% cash back um, on rotating categories such as grocery stores or restaurants or gym memberships and all these different things. So if you go into your Discover app, if you already have this card, you'll see every quarter they offer different types of cash back bonuses. So um, say that um, though this already passed, but you could have been getting 5% cash back at restaurants and drugstores. And this is actually one of the best cash back cards too, but I really like talking about it as a starter card because it gives people a really good opportunity to start growing their credit in the beginning. 
Um, you also get like this is the calendar year, um, obviously coming soon, coming soon. A lot of the time during Black Friday shopping, they'll give you Amazon, Walmart cash back, 5% cash back on really awesome categories. Um, but right now you could get 5% cash back at gas stations, electric vehicle charging stations, home improvement stores like Home Depot and public transit. So, I mean, that's a really good offer for a starter card and you could get a pretty good credit limit and you could, you know, do a lot. It's pretty easy to get approved. It's very low barrier to entry with this credit card. So, and then at the end of the year as well, right? You're getting 1% cash back on all other purchases, but at the end of the year, you get an unlimited dollar for dollar match. So it's basically a 2% cash back card in the first year. So say that you spend like, $20,000 on this credit card, an example, you get 1% cash back, that's $200 cash back, um, they'll match you on the cash back. Um, and this is a card that has a 0% APR for the first 15 months on purchases and balance transfers. So say that you want to go make a purchase for $5,000 on a credit card, and maybe you could get approved for $5,000 with this credit card because it is a pretty low barrier to entry card. The typical credit limits that I see are between $1,000 and $15,000. Results are always going to vary. But um, if you make the minimum payment on this card during that first 15 months, you're not going to be charged any interest, which is really exciting and it's really great. Um, and I think there was one other benefit that I wanted to talk about with this card that makes it a card that I think honestly everyone should have in their wallet. I mean, the 5% cash back is really great. Um, this unlimited cash back in the first year is really solid too. Um, you get really good intro APR, 15 months is pretty sweet. And you get tons of card designs. I have this card design right up here from <laughs> one of my Discover cards. It's really crazy looking sun. Um, and so, and another thing too, actually that I want to mention is that they do soft pull credit limit increases. So because they do soft pull credit limit increases, you could always ask for credit limit increases with Discover. And with this being like your first ever credit card, if this is gonna be your starter credit card, it's awesome because this will be your oldest trade line and you're going to be able to always increase the limit and it's gonna be easier for you to get higher credit limits on personal credit cards. And when you get a business credit card, they're gonna look at this Discover card and see, hey, what's your credit limit here? And if you have a high credit limit, it's going to help you get approved for a higher business credit card limit. So I could talk about many other starter cards, actually, but I think I've talked a lot about the Discover card and why it's probably my favorite starter credit card. It's very easy for anyone to get. Um, the only second place um, one I would probably mention to people would probably be a Capital One credit card. But the only thing I don't like about the Capital One credit cards is that they will throw an inquiry on all three credit bureaus but with discover it's only one inquiry on one credit bureau last time i checked so that's the really great benefit about this card i think if anyone's going to get a starter credit card it would be this discover it cash back credit card and you could always check to see if you're pre-approved and if you qualify for this card before you before you apply for it so i would obviously pre-qualify for it first make sure that you would get approved before you go in there and submit your application. So, awesome. Let me know guys, let me know if that's really helpful. That's honestly one of my favorite credit cards. I have a $16,000 limit on this credit card personally, and I'm always requesting credit limit increases on it. And then whenever I'm applying for more credit, it's always helping me with get higher limits with whether it's my more my own personal cards, whether it's with other cards, and it's just got such great benefits on how you could save money throughout the year on cash back and all these other things. And this was honestly the first credit card I ever used when I use 0% interest funding myself. Um, if you know a little bit about my own story, um, I only had $30,000 of 0% interest credit in the beginning. And at the time I didn't know much about business credit cards. So I went out and got personal credit cards. And this was one of the personal credit cards that I got. They gave me a $12,000 limit. I've gotten it increased since to $16,000. And I took advantage of this promotional offer. And I definitely use 
the cash back benefits as well. So there's tons of really great things I could say about this uh, credit card. So uh, let's move on to another one. Um, let me know in the chat, guys, would you like to hear about the best 0% credit cards? Would you like to hear about the best restaurant credit cards, the best all around credit cards, the best travel credit cards? Let me know in the chat, like, you know, what are some of the favorite cards that you would want to hear about? I see one person said travel. Let's jump into, into travel. Oh, let me make sure my phone doesn't die because that's where I'm using my, my audio right now. All right, there we go. Let's see, all around travel. Good news is guys, we're gonna go through all of them. So we're, <laughs> we're gonna go through all these different ones. And these are all personal credit cards that everyone could get their hands on. So let's jump into travel because there's a lot that I could really say about travel credit cards. Um, and I mean, look, there's a lot of different travel credit cards out there. And I think really the best way to do this is to show you guys the list and kind of jump into all of these different ones. So I'm going to show you guys a list from Nerd Wallet, right? But I'm going to dive into this list and my own personal experience with credit cards. So I think a lot of times um, you could get here we go. All right. Let me know if you guys can hear me. Someone tried calling me. Um, but guys, so there's obviously a lot of different travel cards out there. But I think one of the things that um, people are not honest and open about, not even just honest, but a lot of people miss this very important point about travel cards. And that point that I'm talking about is how you're spending your money on the credit card, um, which is what makes it like valuable right like why would you get a travel credit card well obviously to travel but how can you really maximize the amount of points that you're going to get right and i think that's like probably the number one thing and obviously you know it's so funny you can't even see here um how you get the points and things like that um i know a lot of people for example they talk about um the the platinum card for example but Here's the problem with the with the platinum card, right? This is like, I think it's just ridiculous because you have to pay attention with these travel cards, how they reward you points, right? So the thing is, is that the platinum card's only going to give you five times points on flights and five times points on prepaid hotels. And if you're like me and like everyone else, I mean, you rarely ever spend your money on these things. This card is really just a fad. I mean, you only get one times points on all other purchases, right? And a lot of times that's overlooked and you're paying like a $700 fee for this card. Sure, do you get the Centurion Lounge? Do you get all this really cool stuff? Do you get all these like, you know, credits like Uber Cash, airline fee credit, um, the Centurion Lounge, which is awesome, the hotel credits, the digital entertainment credits, cool. Like that's awesome if you use these things and you could cancel out the the annual fee. But the reality is you're probably not going to be spending money on flights and prepaid hotels. Those aren't like typical everyday expenses, which is why I would not say that's one of my favorite cards. But what I would say one of my favorite cards for travel would likely be the American Express Gold Card uh, for many reasons, because if you look at this gold card, you get points on things that you actually spend your money on. And you could still use these points on AmexTravel.com. You get four times points on groceries up to $25,000 a year. That's 100,000 points. That's pretty sweet. And you're probably not going to spend more than $25,000 a year at a grocery store. Like, <laughs> probably not, right? Um, maybe that's probably like an average. I, I'm not too sure. I, well, I personally haven't like spent money at a grocery store in a while, but I spent a lot of money at restaurants. So you get four times points at restaurants and it doesn't look like there's a cap on it. And, and like, if you spend a lot of money on groceries and you spend a lot of money at restaurants, then you're going to get rewarded more points than what you would get, um, on the platinum card right which would make it like a better opportunity like a better card so i would so really what i'm trying to say here guys is like the best um 
travel card, right? Um, there's not, I, I don't think there's any particular one, but when you're choosing a travel card, like take this for example, right? Five times points on Chase Travel. Like, are you really gonna like spend a lot of money on Chase Travel? Um, three times points on dining. Like, okay, three times points on dining. Um, three times points on groceries. The gold card is obviously better than this. Um, let's see. 75k up to 75k when you refer friends so that's pretty sweet amex has similar things too right but it's really looking at um the rewards on how you use the card that's going to determine what's the best travel card for you so really i think personally this is my own opinion is that when you're choosing a travel card i wouldn't just go after the first travel card that you see I would go in, dive through all of these different options and figure out like, what do you spend the most money on, right? Because if I'm going through, okay, interesting. So they kind of just jumped me into the application. Offer terms. Let's see. They're not really giving me FAQs. Yeah. So obviously you take a look at where you get the most points and that's going to help you determine, you know, what the best card is ultimately for you. Let me know if that really helped you out a little bit in terms of learning more about travel cards and what really is the best travel card. If I'm looking at all of these, to be honest, guys, I'm probably going with um, like the Freedom Unlimited or I'm going with the American Express Gold Card um, just because of how I get rewarded. And that's going to be personal to you. You're going to be able to determine what the best travel card is for you based on the categories that you spend the most money on. And yes, most of the time I saw a comment come in, um, are the zero annual fee bad? No, like that's a very good question. And like, that means you don't have to pay an annual fee um, every year for the card. And that's really good, right? You don't have to pay an annual fee. But if you're going to get like a heavy points card or something like that, usually they do charge some kind of annual fee, but What's very important to consider is when you really crunch the numbers on what you spend the most money on, that's what's going to help you determine what's the best travel card that makes the most sense for your wallet. So if you want to get rewarded in points to go travel and use points for rewards, go look at the categories that you spend the most money on and then go pair that up with different credit cards that exist. And then you could determine for yourself how you're going to make the most out of a credit card um, and how much you're going to be able to save. Cool. And so I have some good questions here, um, in the chat. Um, and they're just coming directly to me. Um, what is the difference between personal and business credit cards? So the difference between personal and business credit cards is that actually a good thing. I, I, I pulled this up here. So, um, this is what we got here. So there's huge benefits to business credit cards. Um, it doesn't affect or well, the balances that you max out on your business credit cards do not report to your personal credit score unless it's like a TD Bank, Discover or Capital One business credit card. Those three banks do report the balances to your personal credit. You oftentimes get higher limits than on personal credit cards. So maybe if you get like a $5,000 limit on a personal credit card, you might be able to get a twenty or thirty thousand dollar limit on a business credit card, so you get higher limits. Um, oftentimes, the rewards points and the cashback systems are a little bit better for business owners and the categories in which you spend money on. Um, you get, you know, obviously there you get zero percent interest fund. You get zero percent interest um, introductory offers, just like on personal credit cards. Um, and most importantly, it doesn't report utilization. Um, to your credit score. So say if you max out a business credit card, it's not going to report on your on your business, um, on your personal credit report. So that's like something that's really, really, really valuable about the business credit card is that you could get higher limits. And then when you max out the cards, they don't report to your personal credit report. And if at any time, guys, you are interested in getting 0% interest funding for your own businesses and investments, you can text this phone number on the screen um, along with your credit score 
Um, and then we could get in touch with you. My team could get in touch with you to help you get 0% interest business funding for your businesses and investments. Um, so that way you could get started with the process like the other members who've already joined with us. So I want to move on to the next one, right? Because we talked about some business credit cards. I'm sorry, we talked about some travel credit cards. Um, what do you guys want to hear about next? Do you guys want to hear like the best cash back credit cards? Um, the best, we talked about the best starter cards. Um, do you guys want to hear about the best high limit credit cards, the best all around credit cards, the best 0% APR credit cards. And someone asked, are those travel cards starter cards? I would not suggest these as starter cards. The only one starter card that I could see here realistically is this Chase Freedom Unlimited card. This would be the only starter card that um, would make sense out of this whole list. Um, and the autograph card is not bad either. Um, let's see here. Let me just see what else. Yeah, those would be the starter cards on list this list. But then again, this is the number one best starter card in my own personal opinion. Cool. So let's see. All right, I have a lot of people saying high limit. So let's jump into some high limit credit cards. So this is gonna apply to personal credit cards. Now, um, the diff now here's the thing, guys. Like, I'm gonna tell you the high limit cards that are the best for personal credit cards, but that does not always mean that that also applies to um, business credit cards. They Business credit card limits and personal credit card limits are two separate things. So I'll share with you guys the highest um, limit credit cards for for business for for personal, because um, this is going to be a personal credit uh, workshop today. So I would say there's three companies, or I'll even count four. I'll even say Discover is one of them. To be honest, Discover because you could get up to like a fifteen thousand dollar limit. I'll actually give you guys five. I'm gonna give you guys five. So obviously one of them is gonna be Discover. Number two are gonna be these on the screen, uh, Chase and American Express. They're very well known for giving really high credit limits, especially American Express. American Express gives you out charge cards, which means that you have to pay the card in full every month, but they give you insanely high credit limits. They do also give you high credit limits on their traditional lending cards as well. Uh, my brother got approved for $20,000 at 19 years old on the Blue Cash Everyday card. And the Blue Cash Everyday card is not here, but there is the, the Cash Magnet card. Let me see. Huh. Wonder why it's not here. Yep, this card. So my brother got approved for this card. He's 19 years. Actually, no, he's 20 years old now. And he got approved for a $20,000 limit on that card. So this is a really good high limit card, probably after you get approved for a Discover card. This is all talking about building high limits, starting out right out the gate and really building that over an extended period of time and really building yourself for success. So three banks I really, really like um, for high limit credit cards are Discover, um, American Express and Chase. And then two other banks that I'll tell you about. Um, one of them is a credit union, which obviously many people probably hear about this, is a Navy Federal Credit Union. Um, sometimes though, I do see people get stumped with a low credit limit to start out, but I'm a Navy Federal Credit Union member myself. I first got approved with a $3,500 card, and the other day, out of curiosity, I asked for a credit limit increase on my Navy Federal Credit Union credit card, um, they did not give me a hard inquiry and I got it increased to 10,500 and I never used the card, which is pretty incredible. So they gave me a $10,500 limit um, on a credit limit increase, which is really great. So I would say Navy Federal Credit Union number four, and I would say number five are just local credit unions. Local credit unions are typically very good about giving high limits and you know, wanting to grow with you um, because they're mostly tailored toward the consumer versus the business. It's very hard to find business credit cards that are actually offered through the credit union without being offered by some third party like Elon Financial Services or um, or FNBO or, or services like that or my card services. 
Um, but those would be like my five favorites are credit unions, Navy Federal, Chase, American Express, and Discover. I typically see people have very high credit limits with those cards. And really, guys, the name of the game is if you start building relationships with any of these banks, and the more that you use their card, the more you max it out and pay it down, the more you're going to be able to establish a better relationship with them over time and the more they're going to trust you with higher and higher and higher credit limits. So that's going to be a really good secret to you guys getting higher credit limits on business on personal credit cards like that. Can you read off the sequence again? Yeah, absolutely. So and actually I'll throw it here on the screen. Let me see. All right. What do we got here? Actually, let me do this. So what do we got here? So I would say so discover chase uh Amer american express navy fed federal credit union and then honestly any credit union <laughs> credit unions are typically pretty good about high limits to be honest in my experience of working with many credit unions like look at a local credit union in your area let me actually see there's this one in the past i wonder if it's still on their website but i one of my first ever clients couple of years ago, um, had an account with this credit union. And just to prove my point, let me see. Huh, let me see. They used to say it on the website, but sometimes on some of these credit union websites, sometimes on these credit union websites, um, this is a credit union in Pennsylvania. Sometimes they'll tell you on the credit union website. Oh, I know one. I know one. I know one. Here you go. Very random credit union. If you're a Polish person, um, here's a credit union for you. So let's take a look just to prove my point here for you guys. So we go here to credit cards. I saw this the other day because I helped someone apply at this bank the other day. So if we take one of their personal credit cards here if my screen could ever load like i told you guys my my internet is absolutely terrible today all right but we'll see if it loads but for example this credit union if you're polish um you could get approved for up to thirty thousand dollars right so let's see where is it maybe you have to just click learn more there it is yeah limit up to thirty thousand dollars that's pretty sweet so, oh, I see on my screen, it's still frozen on my phone. That stinks. So on my screen though, my father is Slavic. Do I qualify? You might be able to qualify for this if your father is Slavic. So on my phone, it says that the screen is frozen. So, um, but if you go to this website, psfcu.com and go look at their credit cards and you're Polish or Slavic, um, you could get a credit limit up to $30,000 with this credit union. So just to recap those high limit personal credit cards my five favorite places to go for high limit personal credit cards and the list is different for business credit cards i will tell you that um for, for personal credit cards discover chase american express navy federal credit union or any credit union these are going to be um five of the best places um, to get high limit personal credit cards. So let's jump into, um, let's see, someone actually mentioned balance transfer credit card. So I think that's a good one for people too. I think obviously the best balance transfer cards would be to a business credit card. So that way your, your credit score goes back up. But let's talk about some of the best balance transfer credit cards uh, for May and some of the best ones that you could get your hands on. So without looking at those. Yeah, this is a good list. All right, so here's some balance transfer cards. So City would be another bank. They would probably make the top 10 for high limit credit cards. They do give pretty high limit credit cards. Um, and this would be a good balance transfer card too. Um, their balance transfer offer is for 18 months. You also get 2% cash back on every purchase, which is really awesome. And they also have a very similar offer to Discover about doing 5% cash back, but through the city travel portal. Uh, the blue cash everyday card, right? This is a very good high limit credit card. And it also, this would also be the, probably the number one all around credit card right now. 
um, because you get 3% cash back at supermarkets, 3% cash back at online retail purchases such as Amazon, 3% cash back at gas stations. You get $200 cash back after you spend $2,000 on the credit card in the first six months, which is pretty easy to do. And you get 0% intro APR on purchases and balance transfers for the first 15 months that you own the card. And it's pretty easy to get a high limit. So this would be a phenomenal option for a balance transfer card, because even after the balance transfer period, you do get all these incredible cashback bonuses as well on US supermarkets, US online retail purchases, US gas stations, you get incredible welcome bonus, you get 15 months for balance transfer, you do have to obviously initiate that balance transfer usually in the first three to four months. Uh, the Chase Freedom Unlimited card is also a really good card because you get really good cashback bonuses here too. Um, let's see what else we got here. This would also be, um, this is a purchase card, not a balance transfer card. City Rewards. City has really great balance transfer cards and they're pretty good about credit limits. Um, but so is American Express. It's really cool that American Express has a balance transfer offer. Um, as well as this Discover card that I keep coming back to, also does 0% APR on purchases and balance transfers. And it's oftentimes very easy to get approved. So if I had to consolidate this list into like three banks, I'm gonna say this Discover card, I'm gonna say this Blue Cash Everyday card with American Express, and I'm gonna say uh, any one of these city cards are typically pretty good. So um, those would be like my three favorite places for balance transfers. The Navy Federal used to be a really good place for it too, but really not anymore. Um, I would say some of the best places to do balance transfers are with City, American Express on this Blue Cash Everyday card, and the Discover It uh, Cash Back card. Those would be probably some pretty reliable places that you could depend on to get a high credit limit most of the time. Um, obviously everyone's results are different, but in my experience of applying for funding with many people, Discover, City, and American Express have been very good with cash back uh, or, and with balance transfers and giving high limits. So these are very competitive uh, personal credit cards that I would say are really good balance transfer cards. So let me check here in the chat guys and see what are some of the other cards that you guys would be interested in. How about specific cards for American Express, Chase, and Discover? Yeah, uh, I mean, I mean, really, there's so many guys. At the end of the day, like, we could have this like long list of the best credit cards, but the best credit cards really come down to where you spend the most money per category. And like, there's like tons of like neat, interesting cards out there. Um, but like, for example, it's all about kind of putting in your wallet like what are the best credit cards right and i use mostly business credit cards nowadays but if i were only limited to personal credit cards well i would look at the cash back calendar and see well okay if, and and honestly i'm probably going to do this i would definitely have this discover card in my wallet because from april to june um for the next 60 days i get five percent cash back at gas stations like I go to the gas station like at least once or twice a week, right? So I'm getting all this cash back at the gas station. Like I'm not going to get that on all these other cards, right? It's paying attention to where you spend the most money, right? If you go to the restaurant, if you go to restaurants a lot of the time, right? Well, you could get which card? You could get this Capital One Saver One Cash Rewards credit card. There's a US bank card that's pretty good. Um, the city custom back credit card, you get 5% cash back on purchases eligible in your top spend category. There's the US bank cash back card that's really, really good. Let me see here, let me pull it up for you guys. Uh, let me see here. Yeah, here you go, right? And they tell you like what the cash back categories are, right? So let's take like this card, for example. Oh, that's a sweet design. They changed that. But um, the US Bank Cash Plus credit card, right? Up to 5% cash back plus a $200 bonus when you spend 
$1,000 in eligible purchases over the first 90 days of account opening. You get 5% cash back on your first $2,000 in combined eligible purchases each quarter on two categories that you choose. They also do have a 0% APR offer on this credit card. And you get 2% cash back on one everyday category like gas stations and all this stuff and then 1% cash back on everything else. And you get tons of different um, categories, right? And so that's really the key guys, like the best credit cards to put in your wallet are gonna be the ones that reward you the most based on the categories that you spend on. I think like, the, uh, like and that's how you determine the best cash back and, um, and the best travel cards. Like, or well, the best travel cards are gonna be determined on what categories you spend the most on. Same with cash back. Um, but in terms of like balance transfers and high limits, like that's kind of where it differs. You want to know like what credit card companies give me high limits and which ones will do balance transfers with me. And that answer, right, like we mentioned before, is Discover, American Express and Citi. Those are typically banks that match high limits with balance transfers. So those would be the best options for it, right? And if you consider this too, um, U.S. Bank also does balance transfers. It's a very competitive market. And there's plenty of great credit cards out there where, I mean, like even you could do this, but, but this is like a 2% introductory rate, which kind of stinks, but but still, right? You could get high credit limits and things of that nature. Um, you know, the only credit card that we really didn't talk about yet are 0% APR cards. And guys, you could find tons of 0% APR cards with tons of different banks. Um, all of these cards that we're going through here have 12 months, 15 months. Um, there used to be a lot that had eight, like 24 months, but they started discontinuing that. Um, there's the Citizens Clear Value MasterCard that gives you um, 18 months and is usually a pretty high credit limit between five and 15K for the Citizens Clear Value MasterCard. This credit card here is pretty good. Not many people talk about it. You get five to 15K most of the time. Results obviously vary, but you know, this is also a pretty decent high limit credit card too. And guys, don't worry, this, this recording will be uploaded to YouTube. So you guys will be able to go back in here and watch this again and you know get more notes and you know get a lot of different credit cards that i'm talking about here um and also obviously guys if you want the best selection of credit cards for your business credit cards right as opposed to personal credit cards when you max them out they tank your credit score and it becomes harder to get more credit but if you want to get high business credit card limits that have all of these amazing benefits right? Like with this Discover card here, the cool thing about this is that, you know, you could get a two to $15,000 credit limit, you get all these cashback bonuses, and you get 0%. But if you want to get really great business credit cards, we have some clients who are getting $50,000 on a single credit card that not only has great cashback rewards, but also has great 0% rewards too. If you want some help getting great business credit cards, text your name and your credit score to that phone number there. And my team could get started on the process with you guys tonight with getting approved for 0% interest business credit. So that way you could fund your businesses and investments. So, so let's see here. So guys, I want to, there's a lot of questions in the chat, a lot of questions in the chat. So I'm going to try and bang through as many of them as possible um thoughts on credit one um i personally don't like credit one for many reasons number one you don't get high credit limits number two it's not really viewed as a great bank um i i personally would not discuss credit one it's usually for those people who don't have the best credit um if anyone's looking to get their first credit card i would highly suggest getting the discover it cash back credit card Let's see here. Is it a good idea to apply for personal credit cards if you're planning to apply for business credit in the future? 
Likely no. I, I personally probably wouldn't do it. Um, just because um, like you start opening accounts, you start getting inquiries, and then it becomes a reason why banks decide not to lend money to you because you've opened up all this additional exposure that they don't want to join the party. But when you're opening business credit cards, the other banks don't see that you're opening business credit cards because it doesn't report that it's an open account on your personal credit. So you could theoretically get 10 business credit cards without all these other banks knowing that you're opening up all these different business credit cards because it's not showing up on your personal credit report. So it is pretty sweet that you have that luxury with opening up business credit cards. You can open up many of them, but when you start opening up many personal credit cards, the banks will back off and they won't want to lend more money because you've just opened up all this exposure and it freaks them out a little bit. Someone said, I got an offer in the mail for the Blue Cash American Express. That's awesome. And if you're getting offers in the mail, that likely means that you qualify for getting um, business credit cards. Because if you're getting really, really, really good personal credit card offers in the mail, that likely means that you could have a lot of success with business credit cards, all as long as you know the best strategy with each bank. Because sometimes you could be getting offers in the mail and you go ahead and apply for a credit card online and you get denied. But there's really great strategies with different business credit cards that my team knows about that I personally researched after working with over 2,500 clients and securing over $100 million of business credit for my clients, we've been able to discover the best strategy for each bank and determine what's the best way to approach a business credit card application so that way people could get the best results. If you wanna learn what those strategies are for business credit cards, text this phone number here on the screen so my team could reach out to you and help you start getting approved for 0% interest business credit, um, usually anywhere between 50 and $250,000, but obviously, Results are going to vary based on your personal credit score. So let's see, how could I apply for one of those? Um, and instead of doing a bridge loan to save fees. So say, so this is a client who's asking this question. Say you don't wanna pay a bridge loan. I would go after uh, maybe one or two 0% interest balance transfer cards first and then move over your balances to those balance transfer cards. Just keep in mind if you're trying to get a balance transfer card and your credit score is below 700, um, it's gonna be a little bit difficult getting a business balance transfer card, um, but that's ultimately what would solve the problem, right? Is moving all your personal credit card balances over to your business credit card balances so your personal credit score shoots up, and then you could start applying for way more business credit cards um, with a higher personal credit score. So I have, so someone has a situation where they're trying to do a lot of balance transfers between personal and business credit cards and they're searching for more options. Um, and I'm gonna write your name down because I know that you're a client inside our program and um, I would love to help you find some extra cards that might be able to help you with some extra balance transfers. So. I will help reach out to you in terms of finding some 0% interest balance transfer cards that you could go ahead and use. Because for you, there might it's gonna be a very custom strategy on finding the best business credit cards or, or the business or personal balance transfer cards. Any tips um, to get a credit limit increase? What to say? Um, there's so many things to say. If you're gonna be calling over the phone, um, just say like, hey, I'd like to use this credit card for my purchases and my my balance transfers and everything. But um, you know, like this other bank gave me a higher credit limit, but I like the, the reward system on this credit card. I prefer using this card, but I don't like how I don't have a high limit or so, something like that. But obviously here's just gonna be some general information. I'm not telling you guys to go and do this, but the truth is like, obviously the higher um, you say your income is, the easier it is for the bank to justify giving you a higher credit limit. Because if you go out there and state that you have high income, it shows the bank that you're capable of paying back the credit card. And that's obviously their biggest fear is that they wanna make sure people pay back their credit cards on time. So the higher 
um, income that you state on a credit limit increase, the easier it usually is going to be for you to get a credit limit increase. How much does it cost to do a bridge loan? So um, I got two responses to that. It's like, number one, how much does it cost not to do a bridge loan, right? Like how much income do you miss out on by not taking advantage of the funding? But the straight answer, to be honest, is um, 30% of the money that they give you. So say that you need $10,000, it's gonna cost like three grand, um, but that's the opportunity to buy you like 0% interest business credit cards. And then once you get those business credit cards, right, what does it cost to not have those business credit cards? What kind of income are you missing out on? So it is like a shitty, sorry for the language, but it is like a crappy, um, like service fee for a bridge loan it's pretty expensive but it's the only private lending option that solves the problem like opening up a personal loan to pay down your credit cards doesn't solve the problem because it shows up as an opened account shows up as debt it's an inquiry doesn't really solve the problem but when you get a friend or a associate or a business to lend you the money um, without it showing up on your credit report it actually increases your credit score gives you the opportunity to get all these business credit cards and um and obviously it buys you the opportunity to go out there and make more money that you wouldn't have been able to make if you weren't able to get your hands on the funding so let's see here a lot of questions so someone's saying i got denied with a business credit card from this one bank after opening a checking account from an in-branch appointment. Should I reapply in the branch again? Just do it online, it's been five months. So I would call your business banker um, and I would do it that way, like maybe over the phone with them because they're just gonna do the online application or I would ask if they have um, like a special application where you could request a higher credit limit. But I probably would do it with them, but they are a very strict bank, the bank that you're asking about. Someone's asking, what would I, what should I do if I don't have a credit card? If you don't have a credit card, I would go and see if you're pre-approved for this credit card. Okay, so I have a couple of questions, more personal questions, and I'm gonna wrap things up for the night. Um, and they're more personal questions. I'm going to have to answer off the the what the workshop here tonight um let me just see yeah they're actually all personal questions so hold on one second guys or well i have to take a second to do this uh all right so oh and thanks for saying that in the chat guys if you're interested in getting zero percent interest business credit for your businesses and investments um here you go on the screen this is the phone number that you could reach out to um 732-936-7993 i'll leave it on the screen for a second um and i see a couple of people have some questions off of the workshop so i'm going to send you two messages inside of voxer um, and take a look at your credit profile sheet and everything like that. So um, I'm gonna reach out to you guys right after I wrap this up here. But if you're interested in getting started with our 0% interest funding program for business credit, uh, text this phone number on the screen, 732-936-7993. And as always guys, it's always great getting to chat with you about funding business and investing topics. Um, it's always fun. It's always interesting. Um, and, you know, it's always great to share knowledge with other people who actually, you know, want to learn about it and use it to leverage their success. So um, I hope everyone had a wonderful night. If you guys have any private questions, um, make sure to hit your funding supervisor inside of Voxer. I'll keep myself around here for the next like 30 minutes to an hour if you're a member and have like some uh, more specific questions. Um, so hope everyone has a good night and I will talk to you all later. Have a great night and have a great week.